Hey, welcome back to High Five Garage. Um, I told you that I was gonna do some driving with this and kind of explain the car and, you know, just take it out for a spin. But the transmission still does not have fifth or sixth and it's getting real annoying when I'm driving it, especially high speeds and stuff like that. On the freeway, I'm ringing out fourth gear. So I think it's time to start pulling the motor in trans. It's really pretty easy on this car. I've just made it easier. So, um, but the first thing we're going to do today is get the new trans ready so it can actually attach to the SR once we get everything out. So start doing that. So to get this CD009 uh, prepared to mate up to an SR20, the bell housing needs to be cut off. Um, I put this line here. That is the way incorrect spot. I don't know why I did it, but it actually goes on this side. And you got to do a quarter inch in. Uh, I got a little block right here. Quarter inch in, bam. Sharpie, that's where you cut. This comes off, it's got a whole new bell housing that actually bolts to the front plate. Another thing that gets cut off is the shaft. It's just a little bit off the front. I can't remember right now how much it was, but we'll do that. You gotta cut off a few nubs that just get in the way. Um, I will be shaving quite a bit off this trans just cause I don't have that much room in my uh, trans tunnel on my wagon. So, but once we get the old trans out, I can see exactly what I have to do. Another thing that gets replaced on this is the rear seal. Um, this thing was damaged pretty good. This was a cheap transmission, but it does go into all the gears. So new seal, clean up this back. I don't think it's damaged, I hope. So we'll see. Let's get uh, started by marking that. Got the line all the way around. Got those marked, and we'll get to cutting that off. Let's get to a time lapse. Just a couple more spots and it should come off. Bam. And that's how you get a bell housing off. All right, got the bell housing off. Wasn't too hard as the second one I've done. So you can see pretty much where it gets cut. Um, I do need to grind all these little nubs smooth because this whole plate comes off and then the replacement bell housing gets bolted on. So all these need to be smoothed out. You can kind of see. And then that'll be good. And then we'll start cutting the actual shaft itself and then start working on the seal and a few little nubs got the nubs on that side cut off um, everything's all nice and cleaned up there's no more nubs where it kind of connected on the bell housing and also got the input all cleaned up and now we got to cut off three eighths from the end, end of it no idea why that's just what they say so I'm gonna cut off three eighths and then you give it a little bevel just like OEM. All right, got the three eighths all cut off, nice and beveled. Looks pretty good, that's all cleaned up, so hopefully the clutch will fit on there really nice. Now, I'm pretty sure there's a few more tabs that need to be cut off, but we're just gonna wait 
until I get the other trans out. I'm pretty sure I shaved a lot of this stuff down just to make it fit probably up here as well. And I know I did something with a little breather as well. And of course I got to change my shifter and everything for the sequential. So yeah, right now we'll just work on this ugly rear main or you know, trans seal. You know what I'm saying. So I gotta try to get the old seal out, which it's just kind of metal left. Um, so let's see what happens. Normally I'll put like a screw in them or, you know, something, but there's not much left of this seal. So let's see what happens, I guess. I think that's the seal. Gotta be, it's bending. Let's hope, right? God, this thing, this transmission sat outside for a long time. There's not much to it, at least to this back seal. So you can tell where dirt's gotten in and stuff like that. But let's see if we can get the seal out. So that actually came out a lot easier than I thought it was going to. But you can see how messed up this thing is. Um, I would assume maybe this car got rear-ended and the drive shaft got pushed into it. So let's hope it's okay. Um, I bought this trans pretty much just sight unseen. Said screw it. It was $100. Even if I could use it for parts for my other one, it's kind of worth it. But let me see if I can get this cleaned up and then see if we can get a new seal in there. I got the surface area all cleaned up. Um, most of it was kind of just bulged out. Um, the aluminum being heated up and pushed, it kind of whatever. But either way, got it all flat and turbo. And now it's time to put in a OEM Nissan seal. Go in straight. It's starting to go. But brand new seal, messed up trans, still worked. So next step is to pull the other trans out. So we'll get on that on another day because today is cold. All right, we got finally got a nice day and we're gonna start pulling apart the wagon to get it ready to put that new trans in. Um, and I'll be explaining exactly how I do that. I have tried to simplify it the whole process just so it's easier obviously um no more angling the motor and the trans this that it pretty much just slides almost right out it makes it a lot easier first we're going to start by draining some fluids uh coolant will definitely be first then eventually drain the trans so when i take the drive shaft out it doesn't leak everywhere and then from there we just start pulling off intercooler stuff um let's see what else yeah, intercooler stuff, front bumper, and then it gets down to the point where once everything's off, remove these four bolts on both sides, two bolts down where it goes to the frame, and then one bolt here at the fender, and then the whole front end comes off. Uh, undo the wiring, and uh, trans mount, motor mounts, fuel, and then it comes right out. First thing is to drain some coolant. It's just a Civic radiator. It's got a little drain right there. I'll loosen that bad boy up. The pan underneath. And get it draining. While that drains, start to disconnecting everything. So wiring, plumbing, intercooler pipes. They're just about everything.
Look who arrived. It's Rob. How's it going, Rob? Good. I need help taking off the hood and maybe pulling the motor at oh, some point. Oh, that's but, right. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to make me bring that pie home. Yeah. Okay. So, he's actually What's the producer pie? of the music that's on these yeah. uh, videos now. So, it'll be in the description. I'm trying to be Moog. It'll be the stuff. I'm trying to be Moog. Yeah, we He's cool. He's Moog. classy. Oh, Moog, yeah. Moog. Yeah, you're not yeah, wrong. He's got the so, cool. Let's get the hood off. All right, now that everything's off, hood's off, you can actually see the damn motor. Um, it's time to take off the front. And as I said earlier, it's got four on each side. They're Allens, uh, 10 on each side. And then I think they're like 17s and Allens on the bottom. And then the whole front radiator support, stuff support comes out. That's how you remove the front clip off an 83 Corolla wagon. So I came from the factory. Yeah. I wish. Um, but yeah, that's the front clip off. Couple bolts, couple rounds. Works out great. I didn't have to do nothing. Yeah, you just chill. I just pulled it off. It's easy. It's so easy. Anyone does this, don't weld them in. Just bolt them in. It's so much easier. Even if you just do it with a rad support, so much easier. Yeah. That's how it should be built. So from here, continue removing turbo, exhaust, manifold, blah, blah, blah. Rest of the wiring, fuel lines, uh, clutch, drive shaft, tranny bolts, or tranny mount bolts, and engine bolts. That's it. Oh, and heater core. That's it. Disconnect the heater core. Yeah, it's a good idea. All right. Everything is pretty much off the motor. Uh, wiring's off, fuel's off. Let's see what else I got the heater core lines off obviously full manifold turbo downpipe all of that and it's actually a good thing that I'm kind of taking this out and replacing it because the manifold was leaking a little bit so I need to get that um, you know kind of milled flat the turbo was actually loose on the hot side don't know why just maybe the clamp came loose I don't know but I'm done for today. It's been a long day of work than this, so um, I'll get on it tomorrow. All right, it's tomorrow, and we're gonna start working on the Corolla. You gotta jack it up, get all the drive train stuff out, mount, drive shaft, sequential, clutch, uh, slave, and yeah, rack and pinion, and then it'll be ready to pull. So let's get to it. Just like any other rack and pinion, gets connected to the tie rods, two bolts holding in the rack and pinion itself, some may differ, and then also the steering shaft, uh, steering coupler going into it. So I'll do that, take off the slave so I don't have to re-bleed it, just let it hang, and then drive shaft and sequential, and then she'll be ready to pull. With everything in the rack unbolted, Then it can be removed. There we go. Bam, rack is out. Gotta drain the fluid. I guess while I'm down here, I'll show you. Um, of course, you got the four drive shaft bolts back there slide it out of the transmission and then two bolts there for the actual mount and two on the outsides for all right the drive shaft is out it's all drained got the drain plug back in and now it's time to take off the sequential if you want to know how to take it off or how to install one i do have another video a couple videos back go check it out uh besides that i'm just going to get it undone then from there it's just the mounts she comes right out so i put the old 
cast manifold back on. It gives a good point to uh, lift. You can actually go through the T3 hole. And then on the other side, you end up just kind of going through the intake. I don't remember if I end up taking off the fuel rail or not, but I will know once I start chaining it up. So all that's left now is sequential is out. And I think that's about it. We got motor mounts and trans mount. She should come out. Got the motor mount nuts off. The trans mount is undone and held up by the jack. Bam, the SR20 is out. So now from here, take the tranny off, take everything off the tranny so I can get it ready to put on the other one. Trans is off. Everything looks as it should be. Got all the bolts organized. Always be organized. Now time to get the trans in the shop, start switching things out, and get the motor up on an engine stand so I can start working on that. But that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching. On the next one, we'll be putting it back in and getting this thing going again. All right? Might throw in a few things with the trans and the motor. But we'll see. Hey, thank you for watching. This is the High Five Garage. We out.